Hey everyone, before we get this episode started, I do want to do a quick intro here because I forgot to mention it in the episode itself. I'm so sorry. So we do have two winners. Uh, we had a giveaway we were doing on uh, Twitter and Instagram and also here on uh, YouTube. I gave people a chance, a third chance to win something. Uh, but these were prints given to us by Gray Matter Artwork, two Venom prints, which are just awesome. They look awesome. I'll try to put the images right here. These were up for a giveaway, and all you had to do on the night of, uh, it was April 19th, I think it was, when Maximum Venom premiered, and I said, if you, t you know, send me a picture and tag me of you watching the show, and, uh, you know, and that night, and using the hashtag Maximum Venom, then you would get entered into the chance to win. And it's funny, because a lot of people entered, kind of, but some forgot to tag me, or they did tag me, but they didn't use the hashtag, you had to tag me and use the hashtag Maximum Venom. And uh, so there were a couple people that did that. So I want to give a shout out to, I think it's called Under the Capes Cosplay. Uh, they were on Instagram. They won the Instagram side because I was like, all right, I'm going to give uh, YouTube a chance to win. But I didn't have a lot of people enter on YouTube. So I just kind of threw all the names in a hat. I had like seven, eight names. And I threw them all in a hat and, uh, and then pulled them out randomly. And we had our one winner from Instagram, which is uh, Under the Capes Cosplay. So congratulations. You won one of the Venom prints. I'm going to let Gray Matter choose who gets what print. Uh, but there's two prints that are up for grabs. So you're going to get one of them. And then we also have uh, my friend who's called uh, Stupid Unicycle, uh, or One Stupid Unicycle, on uh, on YouTube. But he also, on his uh, Twitter, he won from his Twitter account, which is called Ya yeah Boy, and then a bunch of numbers that I don't remember. Uh, but he's a big supporter. He also is named Talon and a swear word. I won't repeat the swear word here, but his name is Talon something on Instagram. So he's been very active. He follows me. He, he, you know, he follows all my posts and I'm so glad he won because he is a constant supporter, uh, you know, of, of the channel and everything. And it, it was like, it was cool to see someone who's that active and interactive with me, uh, win this. So that was cool. So someone, I don't know under the cave cosplay, I think he came over from, uh, or they came over from, uh, the gray matters, like, you know, post that they posted. So that's great. Gray matter got themselves a winner uh, who's a fan of theirs. And then we also have someone who's a fan of this show. So thank you both very much. That, that's my intro for this. And now without further ado, let's dive into the episode. Hello, my fellow parasites. Parasites, apologize. No. Anyway, welcome to season four of the Venom Vlog. This season we'll be covering Venom 2 movie news, more classic Venom and Carnage stories, the Spider-Man Maximum Venom animated series, and all comics involving Eugene Flash Thompson. So sit back and enjoy another exciting episode of The Venom Vlog. I'm Tom Hardy and you're watching The Venom Vlog. Oh, man. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Venom Vlog, and in this episode, for episode 500, I just wanted to make this like a thank you video, so there's not going to be any movie news or anything like that in it, so for those of you who just come here for that, maybe this is an episode you want to skip, but uh, if you don't skip it, you'll be uh, surprised because throughout this episode, we're going to give out digital codes for comic books, like this right here. Uh, there's a Punisher comic book for you, and I think I have four more Punisher issues that we're going to give out in this episode, and we have a total of 30 of these codes, and what you do is you go to marvel.com slash redeem, you put in the code, and you get that digital comic for free, and I, you know, I was gathering up all these Marvel books that I had over the past like two months before you know the lockdown and everything happened and I came up with 30 codes so I'm glad I was like oh good a good even number so throughout this episode that's my thank you to you guys for supporting the show for getting us here to episode 500 uh, when I started episode one I just thought okay maybe I'll do this for like a couple months or a year or just until the movie comes out and then we'll stop and you know and I'll move on to something else because I don't know I've, I've just had that track record when it comes to th completing things and getting things out there and, uh, and I, I didn't think I would go much further uh, than maybe like 100 episodes or something. But once we hit 100 episodes, I was like, we're probably going to go at least two or 250. And then it just kept going from there. And then here we are at episode 500, passing 2,000 subscribers. We're at 2,300 now. And again, I can't thank you guys enough for that. Um, we'll try to do something again if like... Uh, some people are saying, oh, 2,500 is a good number to celebrate something. I don't know what we'll do at 2,500, but if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. Um, and I guess the main thing I was going to wait for was 3,000. So if we cross 3,000, I kind of go by thousands for the most part. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, whatever, we'll figure something out. We'll figure something to do. And as long as I have digital codes, I'll try to give them out to you. There won't be any more after this for a while until comic books start, you know, cycling through and, and getting out there again. Because obviously we're in a different world now and, and a lot has changed. And a lot has changed from just when we started started this show till now um, even hearing that Venom 2 is getting pushed back so you know uh, this summer I was thinking I was gonna have a lot of movie content to talk about and chances are I might not have a lot of movie content until the fall when they start up the you know marketing and stuff so uh, I'll don't worry I'll come up with content for you guys we still have one Venom vlog or Venom uh, uh, Maximum Venom episode every month uh, so one a month for the next few months um, then we'll probably have some toys coming out in the fall 
and we'll have we have a ton of comic books we still got to go through eddie brock uh, flash thompson we got to go through some more carnage stories so we have a lot of content of course we're going to make more content we're going to keep it going so don't worry about this show we're 500 episodes now but we're going to keep going. <laughs> Maybe we'll get up. I'm thinking like, I was thinking, oh, we'll get up to like 666 episodes. Uh, I was like something really dark and weird like that. But then I was like, nah, because if they make Morbius and then other movies and they tie Spider-Man in, we're going to have other content to make. So we'll probably, you know, who knows? Maybe this show will see a thousand episodes one day. That'd be pretty awesome. But I couldn't have gotten here without you guys. And I appreciate that support. And what I want to do in this episode, because like I said, this isn't really for people who came here for movie news or, or comic news or anything like that. This is just me kind of looking back at like the last couple years of my life and giving thanks to the people who made it happen. And one obviously is you guys getting me here. And then obviously in my personal life, I had a lot of stuff going on. So you're going to see a couple of montages I'll splice in. Uh, with some music and stuff, uh, you know, and it'll have images from when I worked at Lego, and I'll talk about Lego real quick. And again, throughout these little montages, you'll see codes for digital stuff. So if you do stay and watch till the end of the episode, you have plenty of opportunities to get some free comic books. And please try not to be too greedy. If you get like two or three, that's great, but try to let other people, uh, you know, get a chance to get it. And whatever codes you do get for whatever comics, let me know down below. And hopefully I labeled all the codes right. I think I might have mislabeled some of the Doctor Doom ones. So if you put in a code and you're like, hey, that's not issue one, that's issue three or something. Thing. It's totally my fault. Um, I think Morbius I screwed up on too. It's just my fault. I put the wrong issue numbers in there, but the codes are the codes for the books that I meant to give to you guys. So uh, so don't freak out or anything like that. Um, but Lego, you know, it's been a big part of my life uh, yeah, after I left comic books. I was kind of lost. I didn't really know what I was doing. And uh, and I think Lego kind of helped give me some structure. There are some people that, you know, I guess, because uh, I saw some people come out at me on Instagram, or at least one person in particular, who I think it was just a troll, and it might have even been an, a former employee or ex-employee um, who was trying to, you know, harass me and give me trouble and say that I sucked at, you know, my job at Lego. Yeah, I admit nobody's perfect. And I, and I admit that I didn't have a lot of, you know, great leadership at time to push me in the direction that, uh, you know, would have made me a better leader, but we acknowledge that. And then Lego did step in and help us out and helped us grow as people. And I felt like by the end, I was starting to get the hang of the job. I, I was starting to get to know what exactly I needed to be doing every day and, and working on it. And the cool thing was Lego was very patient and they weren't there to be like, you suck at this. They were awesome. And they were like, Hey, let's nurture this. Hey, you're really good at this. Let's expand on that. Here's stuff you got to work on. Let's start working on that. And they were great. And I feel like I, I learned a lot over the past, you know, a couple months or my last few months there. So I want to throw up a quick montage of all just the people that came to visit me in my last month at Lego and who you know wished me well and uh, and also I want to put in a little a moment there with a kid named Alex who used to come and visit me pretty much every single day after school and it was really awesome so without further ado let me cut to that Lego clip and then uh, we'll come back here and talk some more Alex, um, you're my favorite customer that comes in here. Uh -huh. You come in and see me every day after you get out of school, right? Yes. And uh, you're, what's your favorite superhero? Flash. Flash? Mm -hmm. Well, I got a gift for you that mm -hmm. I got two years ago, and I've been holding on to it, and I want you to see it. So go ahead and look in the bag. Okay. 
No. Oh my god. And it's signed right there. Uh huh. By the guy who plays the Flash. <gasps> no way. Are you serious? It is, man. Oh my god. That's Ezra Miller's signature from Justice League. I met him in person and he signed it for me. Wow. That's yeah. So cool. And I wanted to give it to you because I know you're the biggest Flash fan in the world. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. So here, give me a handshake, thank man. You. It's it was a pleasure being your friend all these years. Okay. Yes, Lego, thank you so much. I met some amazing people at that job, coworkers, customers, um, you know, just people in the mall too. You know, and I even went at one point and got a second job at the mall at Hot Topic, but that was at the peak of my health, starting to decline and getting me to the point I'm at now. And uh, for those who have been asking, you know, I am doing a little bit better. This rest has helped me. Uh, the move was very stressful, and we'll talk about the move here in a second. Uh, but before we get there, because I'll show you a little video of, of the move itself. Uh, but before we get there, there was another family I had outside of my Lego family who really meant a lot and, and helped me find a, you know, a place in the world of comics. Um, and we're just, they became family. They were awesome people, which was my family at Golden Apple Comics, the Leibowitz family. And, uh, you know, it, they were great all these years. And uh, even at times when, you know, I, I didn't see eye to eye with stuff when I used to work there uh, with Ryan or anything. I, I love that guy and I love their family and his family. And they were always awesome to me. And they were nice enough. Like, you know, like when I left Lego, I was like, uh, you know, I didn't really want kind of a party or anything like that. And, and luckily there wasn't anything planned. So it's kind of like, good. Yeah, there's no reason. I'm just leaving. Everybody leaves every day. You know, let me just get pictures with you guys. And those pictures from my Lego friends and even the ones I took at this Golden Apple party, um, you know, I'm going to put them up on a wall in my sunroom and celebrate you know all these memories too so all the pictures you're going to see uh, that you saw in the lego video or a clip and then the uh, pictures you're going to see in this next clip um, most of those I'm, i've printed out and i'm going to be hanging them up pretty soon and so uh you know you'll see that on my instagram no doubt but uh you know golden apple they ryan showed me a lot about selling and i you know he led me to getting a job at top cal i worked there for a few months and then you know, for personal reasons and, and just my own health and trying to keep a, an eye on myself and, and also the, that was kind of the dark times for me. A lot of people don't, you know, know too much about that, but there was a time when I, you know, tried to take my own life and I was going through a lot and I didn't feel like it was healthy for me at that time to just, um, you know, work at a place like, uh, and, and this was nothing against Top Cow. I loved it there. Actually, they were the one good thing going for me at that time, but I felt like I was screwing the job up and I just, I guess I just didn't want people to remember me as a screw up and hate me. So I kind of quit before, uh, you know, things got too tough for me. And, uh, and then when I did, a friend of mine named Omar was like, Hey, you know, I, I want to start up a comic book company. Would you be willing to come work for me? And, and that was awesome of Omar to give me, a, you know, a job like that where I could work from home. Um, and I had that at Top Cow too. So I gave it a shot because at this point I was already through the, the worst and I was like, all right, let's try to climb back up and try to rebuild myself. And Omar was there to help me do it and gave me a lot of opportunities. But unfortunately, I felt like the same thing with Top Cow. I felt like I got to a point where I was like, you know what, maybe all these years I've wanted to work in comics and Maybe I really don't. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what's going on with my life. I don't know where I am uh, personally, and I'm struggling a lot in, in a lot of ways. And I think it's best for me to just go try to do something a little bit easier. And that's what led me to Lego. And I will say, Lego was not that easy, actually. Uh, they have very high standards over there. But what I liked was, like, you know, Omar and like Top Cow even was doing, and even Golden Apple, they all, every place I worked helped me build myself in some way. And it wasn't until I, you know, now I'm a little bit older that I look back and I realize just how much I've grown working at these places. And, uh, and I owe a lot to them. So it was nice that Golden Apple, they were like, hey, let's throw you a going away party. And a lot of, you know, friends showed up, people that I met at the store, people that I worked with, people in comics that I got to meet from working at the store. And, uh, and it was awesome. It was, a, it was another great goodbye. And so I want to cut to that clip now. And there is more digital codes that are going to be given out in this clip. So if you're still watching, thank you so much. Enjoy the free comics and hopefully enjoy the next clip. If you don't know Steve and he just happened in the Golden Apple, well, this dude's awesome. He used to work here. I still feel like he worked here. But so when, he, when, he, when I see him, I like want to put him to work. He'd be like, don't bag that. Don't do this. Don't go work to register. You know what I mean? Like, people who work here off and on, like, they're just their family. He's always been family. I wish my mom was here to say hi to him and send him off. He's moving to Florida soon in a week. And we're all here because we know him, we've seen him, we've checked out his 
Venom blog. We've read Venom blog. some of his uh, Kickstarters, right? You got several Kickstarters. He's done some amazing things for people with aneurysms like himself. He's passionate. He's focused. But he's uh, he's also a realist, which is why he's moving. <laughs> kind of like, you know, hopefully retire, as we, we say, right? So you're retiring to Florida like an old person. <laughs> favorite people that I've met since I've been out in LA one of my first true friends that's the thing that's important here not just a good guy to know and it's, he's talented and he's smart he knows about comics blah 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 he's a good friend and I'm gonna miss him terribly but Florida's uh, win is the world win so uh, we're gonna miss seek uh, there's always a place for you here you know you can always come back and crash and uh, for you venom blog viewers you guys are gonna see his productivity shoot through the roof because there's nothing in Florida but meth and vlogging. That's all there is. That's all there is to it. Um, so my favorite thing about Seek has been um, was uh, uh, I was able to collaborate with him on Soulstar, and I was able to do a page on his um, fantastic Kickstarter book Soulstar and be a part of that. And what he doesn't know that I don't think I've ever told him this story. The first time I met him was the very first free comic book day that I was out here in Los Angeles. Seek was working the booth in the back of, of Golden Apple. And where I came from, Chicago, free comic book day was a thing, but it wasn't really a thing. Like, it wasn't like you have to wait in line for five hours to get a thing. It was, you went, you got your books, and you enjoyed comics, and you bought comics, and you went home. So when I walked in, and there was a long line, because out here it's a little bit different, nothing Golden Apple was doing, but it was just different. I was like, the, f can I swear? Sure. The fuck is going on with this long-ass line? And, and Golden Apple was doing it right, you know, so they had a big tent in the back. This was, this would have been like 12 or something. So it was a big deal. So, Chicago that I am, I sneak in through the front door. And I'm just, hey, everybody. Burr, 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 burr. I'm not waiting in line to get my free comic books. Because I'm not waiting in no line. I, don't, I didn't know you guys. But I just was not waiting in a line. And I snizzle out the back door to get to the tent that had the free comics. Because I needed my Avengers, my Spider-Mans. And uh, Seek Donnelly busted me. <laughs> <laughs> I did? Seek Donnelly, 100% busted me. Zeke Donnelly 100% sniffed out that I was not, because the people that were coming from that direction were regular customers and like had bought their weekly pull and that was the setup you guys had. Like It was like you get your weekly pull then you can kind of cut the line a little bit. Zeke goes, uh, hey, uh, did, you, did you wait in line or did you get your pull? And I went, no. <laughs> you're like, alright dude, well, you, got, you got to go wait in line. And, and you gave me the buns rush. I then got in my car and drove to another comic shop. No <laughs> way! I'm not waiting that goddamn life. <laughs> truth to tell, I never got all my comics that year. Because <laughs> by the time I got to the other shop I went to, which for me it was all new, so I had to like Google it. I had to find. Like, I didn't. I drove. I, I drove all over Creation. It. I never because everyone was sold out. Because Golden Apple was doing it right and doing it orderly like humans. Waiting in line, but I've never told you that story. I've never, I don't remember and that it at was all. Absolutely, you and I didn't know you. And then when we started working <laughs> together, it pieced in my head, and I was like, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna tell him I'm that asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so, Steve Donnelly, from my heart, I love you. I love your work ethic. I love the, all the things that you bring to the table, and uh, you're, you're going on to bigger and better things, my friend. <laughs>
later, Seek. Good luck finding another roommate as cool as me. <laughs> Bye, Seek. We're gonna miss you. Hope you visit California pretty soon, but I know you're gonna have a lot of fun in Florida. Uh, see you, Seek. Where'd the dog go? I want to say goodbye to him instead. <laughs> Take care, Seek. Have fun in Florida. My man, Seek, always a pleasure. My internet buddy, my LA buddy. I'm gonna miss you, but I know when you come to California, I'll see you in person again. With the comments. Let's put a sweet yeah, working at Golden Apple was a blast, but even just knowing Ryan and Sharon and Kendra and Casey and their dog Lily, uh, just knowing all of them and them being in my life uh, has really improved my life in a lot of ways and helped me, you know, out there. I mean, Echo has been my, you know, saint. He's been by my side all these years and helped me get through a lot of tough times. But so did the Golden Apple family and everyone I met through them and also, uh, you know, the friends I made. I mean, I met Kevin Kraft, uh, you know, while working there and that led me to Mad Scientist Party Hour. And then that led me uh, while I was working or before I started working there, I went over and met Dan Harmon. And I got to meet Dan Harmon, who I definitely want to mention here, um, and Dustin Martian and these people and Matt Dwyer, all these people who had me on their podcasts and uh, and really helped me in my life, helped me talk about my problems. Uh, Gene Hoyle, who is now, you know, when we became friends, I was the aneurysm survivor now we're both aneurysm survivors and we created soul star together the comic book and uh, and then he had appeared me on his podcast and that led to us doing the show for like two years together at nerd nation um and having that and dan and, and matt dwyer and, and dustin martian and these types of people in my life helped me open up about things that i definitely didn't want to talk about like there was a i went through a period at the beginning there where there was a lot of shame, I guess, and I, I just didn't want to talk about my health and what I was going through because I saw it drive a wedge between me and, and other people in my life. And it was hard, it, you know, um, you know, it, it sucked. And so having those people help me talk about it and be on their shows and, and open up. I mean, Dan must have asked me for like six months, seven months, maybe, maybe eight months. I don't know. For a long time, he's asked me to be a guest on the show and I kept saying no. And then finally one day I was like, all right, he's like, would you would you come up and talk like I think people would love to hear your story and uh and he uh you know he was he was awesome man I, I love Dan and I hope he's doing well I hope all of those guys Dustin Dwyer I hope everyone's doing well and uh, I just want you to know you helped shape me um in a lot of ways and hopefully I'm not letting you down I'm trying to do my own thing and, and trying to just you know I'm still here 10 years later like who would have thought and um yeah, and I, I, I probably wouldn't have been if I didn't go back to L.A. and grow in the way that I've, I've grown and, and meet the people I've met who hopefully will be friends for the rest of my life. Uh, it's, it's, it's been an honor, and I definitely am not going to lose touch with you guys. And so uh, after that, you know, and I had Victor, my roommate, he was uh, you know, right before I left. He was someone who I knew out here in Florida uh, before I moved to California. And he just, you know, stayed in touch with me over the years and we became friends and we became roommates. And pretty much him and my friend Josh and my friend uh, uh, Nate, like, are the only kind of people that kept in touch with me too much. Um, and so I have, you know, memories of them from the past 10 years, but I don't have a ton of memories of them while being here in Florida. So I thought, you know, what's the best next chapter in my life is after I've kind of went back and, and went to the unknown uh, to an extent and uh, and lived my life for 10 years and, uh, you know, and, and, and grew in so many ways, what can I do now? And I'm like, well, why not go back to a place that you don't remember? Because I knew and remembered California, some of it before I went back out there, but Florida, I didn't. I said, you know, maybe this is the next step is coming back here. And I've already met with people who, who were like, hey, I remember you and you and you weren't that great of a person and it sucks and it's unfair because I don't remember them and uh, and I don't remember this instant they're talking about and so I figured this would provide a new series of challenges for me in my life um, I came here without a job um, so I'm gonna have to figure that out at some point after I you know uh, kind of recuperate and rest a little bit uh, that's the whole point of coming here was resting for at least like a couple months and then go out there and try to see what I can do and uh, maybe run into some old people and you know that I used to know and and rebuild relationships or figure something out uh, but maybe hopefully grow in a different way and also I'm closer to family so now they can come check on me so it's great but driving here was uh, it was wonderful and crazy at the same time uh, so you'll see in this next clip this last clip here where we'll have more digital codes for you also uh, you'll see in this clip that uh, driving it looked peaceful and it's fun it's me and echo it's got some upbeat music and stuff and and we're giving out digital codes throughout it and it kind of tracks our journey like the seven days it took from us to drive to la to uh to you know to la to orlando but man was it uh not as great as the video looks the video makes it look like it was a peaceful trip 
but it was an anxiety ridden and uh, and uh, a fear inducing trip actually in a lot of ways. So I'll show you the clip so you can see the good stuff and then we'll come back and talk about uh, some of the stress I had going on this trip. So yeah, it looked great, right? Uh, but unfortunately, it wasn't that great because my car—I uh, had to get a—I had to spend. I think I spent like 
uh, maybe almost $3,500, maybe a little bit more, closer to $4,000, just to move from LA to here. Uh, I had to get work done on my car, which I wasn't expecting to get that much work done um, and, ha and how expensive it was. I had to get um, a hitch installed on my car, which that was like 500 bucks. And then I had to rent a U-Haul, which was like another five, 600 bucks. And uh, then I paid for hotels all across the, you know, the, the country. Uh, we stayed at uh, La Quinta Inns everywhere. It was awesome. Like I was, that was the only place I could find that was guaranteed pet friendly. So we just went to one La Quinta to another. I just kept Googling, where's the next La Quinta that's within a six to seven hour drive and six to seven hours on the map quest thing the app that i had actually meant about 10 11 hours for us because we had to tow this u-haul and because i have a very small car and the u-haul with everything in it weighed probably as much as my car or close to it um it, you know it it caught it took a long time to get here uh, we were basically dragging a wind sail behind us the whole time um i did stack the the you know u-haul properly so the nose was a little bit down but all the weight was in the middle that's how u-haul tells you to pack it and i'm glad i did that and I, I made sure i got an extra pin um you know for the for the hitch and everything like that uh, in case uh you know mine fell out on the road or anything so i tried to be 100 percent prepared for everything but when we were driving my car couldn't really get past like 50 to 55 miles an hour which caused me a lot of stress uh because you know, I had big 18 wheelers driving around me, uh, obviously, you know, so soon after a procedure that I had in February, uh, doing this trip was a lot. I was hoping, you know, Nate was going to try to fly out and drive with me to make the trip easier on me. Uh, but unfortunately, he couldn't because of, you know, flights being shut down and uh, the, you know, the virus going out there and, and it, the world changed within a week it was it was insane and uh and so i had to make this very scary trip on my own luckily my friend gene was around and he was like hey man call me every day if you want and i did pretty much and we talked on the phone for hours sometimes and then my mom too she wasn't working she's like hey i'm not working you can call me at this time and i'll talk to you for a couple hours and it, you know if it wasn't for that i i don't know if i could have made that trip and uh and, and we had to make it here by the 28th so we left on the 22nd and we had to be here on the 28th because that's when the apartment and we signed the lease like they were like you know they sent everything to me digitally and they were like hey you have to move on this date because you're basically paying from this day forward and i even wrote them and said hey if i don't get there on that day is that okay like i don't care that i paid for it, it doesn't matter but I may not, can I just have a couple extra days because my car is going so slow? And I had, you know, like I said, you saw in the video, we kind of started to break down in, um, in, I think it was in Arkansas and Conway. Um, and, and so I was like, I, you know, I have to stop and get my car fixed. Luckily, the Austin brother place that we went to, the tire and auto shop that we went to, they fixed us up really quick. It was really cheap. The guys there were awesome. Everyone who worked there was awesome. Um, and, uh, and it meant a lot to me. So because it was so cheap, I tipped them like extra like 20 bucks, 25 bucks. And I said, put this towards a lunch fund and get you guys, get some of your guys lunch today. Uh, because I was so grateful that they in less than an hour and a half got us back on the road for so cheap. And, uh, and it was awesome. And then he even like uh, re-secured my U-Haul uh, to make me to where I felt more comfortable driving because it was rattling and shaking and stuff the, as we were going through the mountains because we took the 40 across uh, from L.A. And uh, and it was tough, like going up and down hills and, you know, the weight pushing my car. And it was like there, <laughs> there was a lot. I mean, and then it was like, you know, wobbling because if, if, it, if it pushed too much, it, like it would shake. And yeah, there were so many times where I thought I was going to have a panic attack. And, and uh, I, there was a couple times I did pull over to breathe for a little bit and it added to the time of the trip. But uh, luckily we got here so like i said it was uh it was kind of both good and bad so the, the song you heard actually is called heaven and hell uh it was just like a, it's like a random free youtube song and so i found that i was like what a great title and i've used that song before on other videos but i was just like yeah that's a great title for this clip so that's why it's in there um but yeah you know just looking back at 10 years like going from you know, recuperating and, and, and kind of getting back on my feet and being in South Carolina. Uh, I worked with my friend George. Most of my jobs I've gotten were from friends, like, because, I, you know, I don't know, like I apply for jobs and I, I, you know, I don't know if it's, you know, even though they tell you, oh, we can't not hire you because of your health and stuff. I feel like sometimes that's the case because people look at your, you know, uh, history and records and they're just like, uh, yeah, the likelihood of you, you know, having an episode here or having something happen, you know, we don't want to take that risk. But they don't tell you that, but I, I, you know, and maybe I'm wrong, but I felt that. And so luckily my friend George, he gave me a job at Blockbuster Video, you know, right before they closed down. And he just had me help him out of the store while the store was, you know, closing down um, in South Carolina. And then I was able to get, you know, my driver's license back and go on the road and, uh, and come back to L.A. or go back to L.A. And where a woman named Gina, who worked at 44 Blue, 
was uh, someone I worked for before, and she was like, hey, I kept your number. I always said if I had more work for you, I'd hire you, and I have something for you if you're willing to take it. And I took it without even thinking, but unfortunately I wasn't, I feel not very good at the job. Some of the days were easy because it didn't require a lot, but sometimes when the work got tougher, um, I wasn't very good at it, uh, to be 100% honest. So they did let me go and, and they were like, oh, you know, maybe we'll bring you back. And they didn't, um, and I understand why. Like, uh, I, I don't fault them for it. I wasn't, you know, I had trouble. I struggled at that job. And uh, and also during that time, like, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but, uh, and Gene's going through this sometimes too, because uh, he's also an aneurysm survivor, but you get angry, you get angry at the world and stuff and little things trigger you and flip you. And, and that happens to normal people, but to people with, you know, damage done to their brain, it, it, it it's not fun sometimes to work with someone like, you know, me. So uh, that's, you know, that's why sometimes they tell you not to work. And I'm like, yeah, but I physically feel like I can. So I kept pushing myself, but luckily I had enough friends after I left, uh, you know, 44 blue, um, I, you know, I, me and that's when I met Gene, we made soul star together. And then i you know, went, I was shopping at golden apple. Ryan was like, Hey, I, I don't want to hire you because of your health. He was the only person who was honest with me. He was like, I don't know if I want to hire you because of your health. And I go, I begged him. I begged, I was like, dude, please. I don't want to be on disability. I don't, I don't want to be on unemployment. Um, I want to, I want to work and do things for myself. Please give me the chance. And he did, man, he did. And I owe him tremendously for that. And then uh, it took me a while, you know, I went from there and then he recommended me to Top Cow. And then for, uh, then that's, I also met Omar at that time. So those jobs I, I got because of Golden Apple pretty much. Um, but then, you know, Lego was the first time that I applied for a job. Nobody knew who I was. I went in there just as me and applied and I got the job. And I think that's why I tried to work so hard at that job. I wanted to prove it to myself that I can do it despite all my obstacles. And most obstacles, you know, you guys don't see, even coworkers never saw sometimes, uh, but there were days where you could tell there was something wrong with me. And uh, and I try, I mean, like I record these videos in short bursts. I do jump cuts sometimes. Uh, sometimes when I live stream, I'm sitting and so I'm relaxed and I make sure that I can handle like a two hour stream or a four hour stream, but typically, I am, I don't go that long without feeling fatigued or tired or, you know, or not feeling well or my head hurts. Like there's, there's a lot that, uh, that I go through that I try really hard not to show people, uh, because I don't like people feeling sorry for me. So I try to show people, look, I'm, I'm normal. I can do this. I can do that. And that makes me feel better. And also keeps people's energies when they're around me, uh, not an energy that I don't like to see on people, which is like pity or, or things like that. Uh, so, so yeah, I, when people say, when they look at me and just go, oh, he's normal. I like that. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm trying, uh, I'm trying to do my best. So, um, this video, like I said, I just, I wanted to look back. Like I owe all these people that, you know, for the past 10 years of my life and even people before who I don't remember, like everyone's contributed to some some to me in some way and helped me grow in some way and even if we don't get along even if we're maybe enemies or you think we're enemies or something or or you hate me for something or you don't like my reviews or or you think I you know I, I talk too much or or whatever it is like or we or I blocked you on Twitter or whatever it is it doesn't it doesn't matter in some way we're all growing from the experiences we have and that why that's why none of them are truly bad experiences as long as we're not truly hurting each other or doing anything you know that extreme um if we're just disagreeing or we're just you know kind of shutting each other out temporarily it happens it's how life is and that's how you grow and trust me you got to take the good with the bad and uh, and if you know if i never did i wouldn't still be here 10 years later um i would have given up on myself you know and i did at one point give up on myself and luckily i you know i didn't I failed at that, thank goodness. And now I'm here to, uh, you know, to, to see what life's like on the other side of the world again and uh, and to try new things and to go places that I don't remember and, and have new experiences. And and it's uh, it's gonna be a fun adventure. So here's to another 500 episodes. Here's to some more fun that we can have in a new city, uh, maybe in this town, uh, you know, after the world returns back to normal and after I'm feeling a little bit better, maybe I can do more stuff outside. There's a lot of comic book stores here we can visit, uh, a lot of videos we can make. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing where we go from here. And yes, the Venom movie's gotten pushed back, but it's not going to slow us down. We're still going to make content and I'm going to still bring stuff to you guys. So thank you so much. Everyone who was mentioned in this video, even if you weren't, you know, you're here in spirit and I'm sorry if I forgot you, but all of you, every single one of you, 
got us to this point, uh, whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not. Uh, but we're going to keep going, and, and it means a lot to me that you've been here. Thank you all so much. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And let me know your comments down below, uh, you know, what you thought of anything that you saw in this episode. But also let us know what uh, digital codes you got so that people can see which codes were taken, and then they can help them find which codes they can try to get next. Uh, so try to do that. Try to be a team player and do that. Uh, so thank you so much. And to congratulations to the winners, obviously, who won the prints from, uh, from Gray Matter Art. Thank you guys so much i appreciate you guys entering and doing that we didn't have a lot of people participate i was kind of blown away i was like wow like they, they, not a lot of people actually followed the rules of, of posting a picture and then also putting the hashtag in there i was quite surprised by that some people who posted would miss one or the other so uh these two they they got it they nailed it perfectly and so uh congratulations to you guys i appreciate your you know contributions to this channel for for watching for following me on instagram and all that stuff being fans of gray matter artwork you know I, wherever you came from i appreciate it very much and, uh, and I hope you guys enjoy those prints. And I'll make sure I let Gray Matter know so they can send those prints to you guys in May. Thank you so much. See you all in the future. Peace.